Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week, we the California pariah, Jonathan Charney, James the Fat Man Stevens. Hello. Rob the Old Guy. You're listening to the Rob Charney Show. Yes, it's me. You're listening to the Rob I'm going to say it twice Show. since I should get it the first time. And the man who could win the Yosemite Sand uh, Lookalike Contest, Ryan Preston. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> Sorry, I just felt like I should have some kind of a catchphrase. We all have to have something. See, I... I've got mine. Everybody just needs to start making their drops. Mm-hmm. I want I want everybody to have their own drops, and then we'll just queue them up. We just just have the battling soundboards. That's right. We'll go for Old it. Old podcast full of memes and sound effects. <laughs> Why not? I mean, I've uh, heard hey, worse. <laughs> I, I, absolutely. So everybody can hear that. Uh, everybody's heard stories about uh, mistakes from a restaurant can be deadly, dangerous, or just lead into an argument. Well, apparently, too much mayonnaise in a sandwich was fatal for a restaurant worker. The fatal mayonnaise? Oh Atlanta, yeah, yeah, uh, heard about this. Uh-oh. Atlanta police are investigating a shooting that left one woman dead and another in critical condition. The mayhem broke out of, out after a customer complained about too much mayo and a may- on a sandwich. <laughs> One evening on June 26, police responded to a gas station about a person shot. When they arrived, they learned two women had been shot after an altercation about the amount of mayo on a Subway sandwich. Lord. What? Okay. Yeah. Hey. Come yeah, on. Yeah, some, some people don't have a scale of angry. They've got, <laughs> they've got not angry, and they've got 10. Yeah. And, and that's it. There's no in between. Some situations require a two, some require a four, some require a six, you know, um, really anything beyond that in any kind of polite society, you're going to probably just be like, let it go at that point. Like, okay, there's no need to get this to an, an eight, nine or 10, you know, cause that's, that's pretty apocalyptic. I'm, um, I'm assuming there's got to be some sort of meth involved, just like ramping it up over mail. However, Having had somebody put too much mayo in a sandwich and it squirts out on you, I can understand wanting to punch somebody, but I'm not quite sure about wanting to shoot Well, if them. I'm not wearing a suit, I don't I mean, I kind of like mayonnaise. <laughs> I mean, look, I obviously hey, these things can start as, hey, there's too much mayonnaise. And then the person barks back a little bit. And now it's not about the mayonnaise anymore. You know, now it's about the person's yeah, attitude yeah. that just came back at you that started his mayonnaise and just, yeah. just boils over immediately. I mean, you know. I be, I bet that the sandwich preparer could have de-escalated everything by saying, "Absolutely, I'm sorry about that. Let me remake the sandwich for you." Well, aren't they and the sandwich? Would have been over, aren't they? Right? Isn't a sandwich yeah. artist or a, a, a sandwich engineer, whatever they they have some sort of fancy <laughs> title? Yeah, sandwich artist. I was a sandwich artist for ten minutes. <laughs> I don't know. It's a sandwich barista. With that beard, they don't look. They looks like they don't let you near schools. Never mind a sandwich. Oh, I was I was uh, quite baby faced at the time. <laughs> oh, I shaved this sense. off. I'm 22 again. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so here's this is from High Times. This made me laugh. And here's the headline: Maryland court cops can stop question someone who smells like pot. And and in my state, that would be almost everybody, depending on where you are. Sure. Officers in Maryland may stop and question an individual who <laughs> smells like cannabis. Yet, less than 10 grams of the drug is still not a crime in Maryland. So I'm not quite sure why you'd be asking. And well, that's rule, what's that, nothing Ryan? new in California. You, I mean, if you drive your car and you get pulled over for a traffic infringement, you know, your tail lights out and they stop you. Um, smelling like weed in your car is reasonable suspicion. <laughs> Even it's though not it's legal? cause yet, but it's reasonable suspicion to continue your search. Well, the biggest problem it's is legal when you roll the, the window Cal. down and all the smoke wafts out. Yeah, that's you know, I mean, that, that, that's when you get the telling. Cost. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> like an old but reasonable suspicion is still a, a, a legal term that the cop can, can then continue his investigation. He can get you out of the car. He can, you know, do DUI, uh, uh, you know, stuff. Um, yeah. You know, same thing if you see, a, you know, a, a bag of an unknown substance on the on the seat. OK, well, now I got probable cause. Um, but smelling like weed is like, okay, there was potentially weed in this vehicle soon or still currently. It, you know? see, but in the state of California, like under an ounce is 100% legal. Matter of fact, you can go to a local distillery, uh, distillery, whatever, dispensary, <laughs> whatever it's called. That's right. They, 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 they make it in a vat uh, shop. And, and get in it. So I don't, I, that's still yeah. shocking to me. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure you can still buy quite a bit more than an ounce legally. Really? I always thought it was yeah. just an ounce. Oh no, no, no. I think I think growers can can have up to like like I don't know, some crazy amount, but I swear to God, it's it's gotta be more than that. Well, I just meant like average Joe on the street who decides he wants to partake in the green leafy vegetable. I thought they could. Oh only no, get an I ounce. know average Joe on the street who's had a couple of ounces delivered to his house. Wow. Wow. Huh. <laughs> that's a that's a lot. I mean, yeah. You know, hmm. it wasn't for like that day. <laughs> <laughs> I hope well, not. He, he'd be busy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, there, I don't think there's enough time in the day to to, to, to do that. But, Snoop, uh, Snoop Dogg. Maybe, um, maybe Snoop Dogg could. I mean, we were talking about how much he spoke last week. Yeah, Ryan missed it. Missed that show where we yeah, talked about but at his, the same time, the he's raise, not just smoking all butt. of that that weed himself that he's lighting a blunt and passing it to 14 different people in the bossy possibly yeah but his blunt roller just did just get his raise well that's good i mean you know yeah Yeah. inflation and and, (laughs) exactly and we we do know that snoop dogg is afraid of willie nelson yeah willie nelson smoked him under the table yeah yeah (laughs) so did you guys hear probably uh, not probably the most famous Hell's Angel of all time passed away, <laughs> and the founder Sonny, wasn't he? Sonny one Barger, of the yeah. Well, of the he was the founder of the Oakland chapter of the Hell's Angels, and uh, Sonny Barger passed away at eighty-three years of age. And considering everything he was through, it just blew my mind that he lived that long. But anyway, yeah, Sonny so, Barger passed away. Here. He had a he had a Facebook post actually. Let me see if I can find it. Um, well, he at the end of it, he said, uh, was it Hamco, uh, Hell's Angels Mother Chapter? So I guess Oakland is considered, um, the, the mother chapter, which I didn't actually realize. There's, um, uh, all kinds of nuances that I don't understand either. And I, it's fine that I don't. Hey, I watched Sons of Anarchy for half a season. I, you know, but anyway, it's sorry. So I, I'm just impressed. He did die of liver cancer, but. Still, you live to 83 years of age, and I'm just very impressed with that. So yeah. you can be a badass and ride a motorcycle okay. so, and live so to I a long I beg your pardon. And live a long, a long life. Somebody's throwing their voice. <laughs> James's voice got a lot higher all of a sudden. So here's, yeah, apparently. <laughs> here's one for Ryan. This is from... Uh, uh, never mind, I can't pronounce it. N I R I S S. One of Webb's primary instruments is now fully ready to see the universe. Oh, James, oh, the James Webb. Webb. Yeah. <clears throat> oh man, I've been looking forward to that for, I mean, probably realistically about a decade is when I think I heard about it. I think it was in development for what thirty some odd years. Yeah, I think they started designing it that, that long back, and then it's. By the way, this but... this this satellite looks like it's from the Buck Rogers TV show from the seventies. It, it's like. It looks ridiculous, but it is very sci-fi. I love it. Well, like you the know, amount really, of moving parts on that. Oh, is ridiculous. that's the part that's amazing about the James Webb Telescope is that all these mirrors are yeah. constantly adjustable and changes, and th- and it's just incredible their ability to control that thing. And from what I read uh, on one of the sites recently, the photographs that they're already getting are apparently mind blowing, and they're going to be releasing them shortly. And yeah. so we're all kind of waiting to see some of this stuff. It should be just for us geeks. The, we want to geek out about the space stuff. The near wait. infrared imager and slitless SLI slitless spectrograph instrument, one of James Webb's space telescopes four primary scientific instruments, has completed its post-launch preparation and is now ready to observe the universe. Each of Webb's four instruments is designed to study a wide uh, range of objects and phenomena in the cosmos, including planets, stars, galaxy, gas clouds, debris, disks, black holes, and dark matter. NRIS will provide near-infrared images and spectroscope capability as the only instrument capable of aperture mask infotrometry is unique ability to capture images of bright objects at a resolution greater than other objects. This is cool. I'm actually, I'm looking forward to seeing some of the images. Because I know when the the other space telescope came up, you saw some amazing pictures. Oh yeah, yes. and this I mean is is so many like like hundreds or thousands of times better than like Hubble. Yeah, that's it. The Hubble you know, Space Telescope. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be very impressive. At least that's what we hear. 
I'm looking. Oh yeah, the way they've been yeah. talking about it for for especially the last couple of years. Uh, I mean, is is like, oh no, that that planet that we saw in the Goldilocks zone and Alpha Centauri, we're gonna like look at the surface. <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost. Yeah, it's it's a lot further out than than Hubble, and Isn't so that's another benefit what's that isn't it near the moon or something no like it's that? near the sun yeah it's near the sun <laughs> and oh, it's really? got its back to the sun at all times so wherever the sun is it's it's the back is facing the sun <laughs> orbiting around the sun so the light is never in those mirrors it's only collecting the light from what's in front of it in deep space oh that's awesome yeah it is it, it's very cool so in i'm sorry no, I was just going to say, but you have to be a real geek to be excited about it. So, in, well, yeah. And <laughs> in, yeah. in something I'm kind of excited about, the Quizax Hatterack, Kyle McLaughlin, joins Amazon's show based on the popular video game Fallout. So the Twin Peaks star is going to be on it. Um, I'm kind of excited, but I want to see, uh, I'm hoping to see Lord of the Rings and see how Amazon does with that before I say I'm going to watch this. What do you think? Anybody interested in it? They're making a show? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of a Fallout. Yeah. Like video games you mean, on which it is based. The Fallout series is set in a huh. world where the future envisioned by America in the late 1940s explodes upon itself through a nuclear war in 2077. The Fallout is expected Fallout is expected to begin filming somewhat later this year. Geneva Roberts, Dwart, and Graham Wagner are the showrunners and, and executive producers of the series with Todd Howard of Bethesda Game Studios, James oh, yeah. Altman of Bethesda Works, and Athena Wickman, Jonathan Nolan, and Lisa Joy of Kittler Films. Emma, Amazon Studios and Kittler Films are producing the series and associated with Bethesda Game Studios. Interesting. Wow. That's cool. Maybe I heard about that and just, just forgot they were talking about a yeah. show. Well, my only thing is if they do it like they did the Wheel of Time, I have no interest. <laughs> so was it so was it that bad? I was never into the books enough to well, actually watch the show. Yes. It I was tried. a massacre. It was um, not great. You know, I I actually figured out that it's basically like they're gonna do a book a season, but there's so much in the books that it's like it's just a disconjointed mess. A shell of itself. And you have no idea what the hell's going on most of the time. And it's like they just don't explain anything. And they're just trying to cram as much content into each season and episode that they possibly can and just kind of give you a brief <clears throat> overview of what's going on. And then they just go on to something else that they don't explain. I'm very confused at this. Terrible. The book series, uh, uh, isn't it like seven or eight if books? They're going to fix it in the second season, but uh, apparently they are going to do a second season. I just don't see it going anywhere. I see them kind of doing maybe one or two seasons and failing. So, James, I, I have I I watched it, not having any knowledge of what it was really all about, and I didn't feel as disjointed about it as you did, apparently, because I kind of just went along with it and all right i mean i was willing to let kind of that well how did this happen okay let's just watch what goes on versus well i understand the backstory and i understand how you know it's supposed to be and i so maybe it wasn't really for people that really knew the story well you know? and i'll tell you what a buddy of mine read the books and i don't know james sounds like you might have also um but the guy that i know read the books old co-worker of mine i mean who's very 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 into you know, uh, high fantasy, grim, dark fantasy. I mean, you know, that's that's definitely his jam. He sold it to me like it was the greatest damn book series that he's ever read, mm. bar none. You know, screw Lord of the Rings, screw, uh, um, you know, what's goddamn the other one? Uh, just by the way, our, our Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, thank you. Our, our dearly departed Jeff Michael, the former another co-host of real flicks reviews said the same thing to me about wheel of time. And I felt, I fell in love with Lord of the Rings at like the scent the, the, the very start, of the paragraph I've read or listened to half the book and just <laughs> get into it. Well, I, of, I, of I, wheel of time. Yeah. I will tell you the first book just really doesn't sell it. Really? Um, I'm in like book six. There's 14 of them. Holy crap. And I really enjoy it. So I'm all the way in book six and I'm enjoying it. But um, I can see why a lot of people aren't into it because 
it, it took me probably a year to finish the first book. Mm. So, so it's like because reading the legend of going other things. Yeah. So it's like reading you the know, legend. See, of I'm at a series. stage where I'm going, I just don't have that much time left. If that book <laughs> takes me that long to get into. Forget it. I'm, and, <laughs> I'm going and, somewhere And I else. totally understand that too. But I mean, like the, the series, like I just, I mean, like I said, I, w- at the point when I was started watching the show, I was about three quarters of the way through the book, uh, the right. first book. Okay. And I'm like, what the hell are they doing? Because, mm. I mean, I didn't even finish it. And I'm like, why, why the hell are they doing it like this? Mm. So maybe yeah. they they redeem it in season two, but... Or maybe not. Uh, yeah, I, I don't Understood. see how they can, but they're going to have to do a, a lot of work to catch up. So I did want to talk about the Fallout TV series because I completely forgot that Walton Goggins is supposed to be the lead in this Ooh. role. Let's and along go. with having Kyle McLaughlin, is that his, is that how you say his name? Um, from David Lynch's Dune. Uh, <laughs> um, I Those two in there, I could yeah. be interesting. I'm kind of curious I'm, what they play. And I'm really excited for Walter Goggins being in it. Yeah, no, that dude, that dude can do no wrong by me. He can he, play the shark from Jaws. He deserves, a, he deserves his own show, so I'm really hoping he's able to carry it and... <laughs> Yeah, he's he's one of the better character actors uh, that that's come out of the last hand. I mean, he's been in a lot of stuff. Um, uh, James and I, I think first saw him Justified, probably. Yep. No, um, the uh, Shield. No, actually, Shield. That's the first time. Oh, I saw him. right. <laughs> so right. he's in the Shield, Justified, and then uh, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, a little bit of <laughs> yeah. Sons of Anarchy is a crazy character. Um, and then Hateful Eight, his character yeah. from uh, Tarantino's Hateful Eight, might be one of my favorite characters ever written. He's got the look of a crazy person. I mean, so doesn't he? Yeah. yeah, he really yeah. does. So that's he, why I think he can yeah, act like it too. Really drag and in, in in Sons of Anarchy, that's just great. So good. Yeah. Um, I'll he's, tell you what I'm looking forward to. Uh, not to change to a different thing, but I'm going to. Y'all not- familiar with the works of Neil Gaiman? Yes. Yes. Um, Sandman, August. Yeah. So I did. So is it being released in August? It's being released in August. Not yeah, filmed. They're done for filming you. it. Um, Live action. This one I've been looking forward to for a while. Neil Gaiman has done a couple of adaptations of his of his novels. Uh, this one's a graphic novel. Um, and if anybody hasn't seen or heard of of the Sandman, I very much recommend DC Comics. Uh, uh, Neil Gaiman, the Sandman is something else. It's it's very very dark, but very very good. So is it yeah, is I'm, I'm it is it live the action? Couple, it will be live action. Yeah. So um, let's let's hope this the comic turns book out. is not live action though. It's they they drew it on paper. Let's hope it's better than 2011's <laughs> Priest. Did? They haven't had a great ex- a, a great non non-marvel um graphic novel live action yeah and this is this is deep core you know dc stuff right here uh the stuff that dc is is really really good at um oh shit we're screwed neil gaiman's DC. had a couple of adaptations of his things uh one, one of my um favorite novels of all time is american gods um and they did a couple of seasons of i want to say three seasons on um I think it might have been, been stars stars yeah yeah, and it was fantastic. Ian McShane um, played the titular character. Uh, the 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 casting was great. The story was actually being told well, and and he kind of gave some room for the showrunners to do what they wanted to do. Um, they changed, you know, quite a bit, but I felt still kind of kept in the spirit of the of the novel. Also, because the novel took place, I want to say about twenty years before. Eh, 10, 15 years before the show itself takes place, they had to update things. So I get it. He also did another book with uh, Terry Pratchett called uh, Good Omens, which released as a mini series on Amazon, which was really fantastic. If you are a fan of the book, it might be the most faithful adaptation from book to anything else I've ever seen. Didn't Terry um, Pratchett do Discworld? Wasn't that his thing? Yes, exactly. Okay. <laughs> um. But so, you know, he's talked about Sandman, you know, as far as like, hey, how much, you know, people have asked him, how much involvement are you going to have in, in in this adaptation? He's like, well, um, more than American gods and less than good omens. <laughs> so it, it almost seems like he's found his 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 happy medium of uh, 
okay, I can have these opinions about these and let, let these guys go from there, but I don't have to oversee every single syllable said by characters. Mm. So we're going to, we're going to switch off to something in a, uh, in a true, I guess, showing that the justice always prevails. A 101 year old for me, former, for me, I can't talk today. Former Nazi concentration camp guard sentenced to five years in prison. So his retirement is behind a jail cell. Uh, yeah, but how, how old is he? 101, 101 years old. Yeah. So he gets a five year sentence, which is more than likely a death sentence. So, yeah. <clears throat> This right. is from CNN.com. A 101-old former Nazi concentration guard has been sentenced to five years in prison by German court for aiding and abetting the murder of 3,518 people during the Holocaust. The man has been charged in 2021 with knowing and willfully aiding and abetting killing of prisoners in... I'm sorry, it's a German word I can't pronounce. Too many vowel, uh, letters. Uh, north of Berlin from January 42 to February 45. Uh, I was shocked when I saw this because I figured 101 years old, even the United States would just like, ah, let the die, the guy die at home. I was really impressed by this. Uh, he doesn't get a pass. I don't care how old you are. Oh, I don't yeah, get no, And I I'm still kind of low-key pissed off. I didn't get to see his face. Yeah, that was kind of bullshit. They should have made him. Is there a mug shot? You know, something. Just There may be. I don't know. Because, you know, we show all the mass shooters face and give them all the fucking press in the world. But this Nazi piece of shit, you know, he gets anonymity. Yeah. Somebody show his face and buy a billboard in Germany. Huh. And uh, this should make. So, a, go ahead. Real, you guys got a story? I got another one. I, I have uh, just one more. Uh, a person passing that. Uh, oh, brings me back to my. Uh, late 60s, early 70s. <clears throat> uh, uh, I don't know how many of you knew of uh, Seals and Crofts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Seals and Crofts, they, you know, their famous songs with Summer Breeze and Diamond Girl and very, mm -hmm. very famous songs. And Jim Seals passed away at, at 80 here just uh, oh, wow. a few days ago. And uh, very, it's a very much kind of a hippie thing, but uh, they, they, the songs are iconic at the time. So, so they are gonna... best known for their hits, Summer Breeze, Diamond Girl, Get Closer. Yeah. If you heard, a, heard it, you'd probably go, oh, yeah, I've heard that song. But at the time, uh, you know, when they were really popular, they were on the radio all the time. So it was very, very much something of the uh, 60s, 70s type sounds. So Yeah, definitely uh, in heavy rotation in, in my home growing up. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, sad to say, you know, all my uh, a lot of my music friends and and people that I've listened to for a very long time, we're we're all turning the dust here, and it's uh, you know, I'll tell you, that's actually kind of the the double edged sword about being into like super old things, 100%. not super old, you know, is in, but but like uh, you know, I grew up listening to my dad's music, yeah. which you know, he's born in fifty four, so right. You know, his music was mid sixties to mid seventies thereabouts in his in his heyday. So that was all the stuff I had before I had my own music. Right. So being a fan of, you know, the the Who and Zeppelin and, you know, the Seals and Croft and uh um well, it goes on and on. David and on. Bowie. I, yeah. I mean, you know, all these people who've since passed, it's like I got into them at a at a, at an age where, oh, in my youth, I'm gonna watch all of these guys start to die. You know, uh, not in your age, you know, like oh, yeah. like no. <laughs> where it's kind of natural to be like, oh, you know what? Hey, some of my my elders are starting to pass away when you're 65. That's fine. It's like <clears throat> I'm 37 and I'm like, oh, my God, all these people I like are dying. <laughs> that's yeah, that that's always been my fault personally, and like in my music, because like I never really hung out with a lot of people my age and like a good deal of the friends from back in the day have been dead for quite a while or all the bands I want to see. They're either going to be taking the uh, hits of Metamucil while going on with a walker or they've been dead for 40 years. Yeah. Well, here, here's the, uh, the, the, the real, you know, head kicker to me is, or, or was to me back in the day, I was a big fan. My mom got me into, um, Laurel and Hardy. Okay. Old movies for anybody who doesn't know they're, they're old black and white movies. I mean, from the, what the, the, the forties, I want to say. Yeah. I thought they were um, earlier. Yeah. Stan, Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy Correct. were 
these, I mean, two kind of like uh, uh, vaudeville type, you know, guys who, you know, contemporaries of like the Marx Brothers and, you know, folks like that who did these movies, these little duo movies of, you know, Laurel and Hardy, um, you know, go on little adventures. They did a version of Babes in Toyland. All of this is to get around to say we went to Universal Studios one day and I was probably like nine years old or something. And Universal Studios were the, was the studio that put out all the old Oliver and Hardy stuff. So they had a couple of guys who were, you know, quote, Oliver and Hardy, you know, standing around doing their shtick. Um, and I looked over, you know, we're walking down, you know, whatever the little main drag. And I look over and I fucking spot Oliver and Hardy. I'm like, mom, look over there. That's Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. And they heard me say this and they, you know, I mean, what you're an Oliver and Hardy impersonator and some nine year old knows who you are. Yeah. Like they're, they're excited. So they're like, holy yeah. shit, some kid knows, knows right. this stick. Right? right. So they're starting to kind of walk over and my mom looks at me and, and just reacted. She didn't think about it at all. And she's like, honey, Oliver and Hardy have been dead for a long time. <laughs> I was goddamn crestfallen <laughs> i looked over but they're at over guys. there mom they're over there yeah they and, dead. <laughs> and i can uh, stan laurel always used to do they always used to wear <clears throat> bowler hats right this shows you how old this is <laughs> these were bowler hats and they do this shtick where he would put it on and it would bounce off of his head you know appear to bounce off of his head and he would catch it and put it back on his head and it would bounce off his head again old vaudeville type of trick right and he starts to do that shit, and I just ghosted this guy. I just looked at him and rolled my eyes like, you're not Oliver and Hardy, and walked away sobbing. Have you, and they uh, walked over all excited like this kid knows who we are, and then he just, just walked away like, oh, did we do something wrong? <laughs> like, no, my mom just told me you're dead. Sorry. Have you have you harassed your mom about that since? Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I told her about it, and she, she was actually upset. She's like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I'm like, there's no way you would have. Yeah. You know, for her That's next funny. for her next yeah. birthday, you should get her like a Laurel and Hardy poster or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She had no idea what what it would do to me, but I didn't realize that it was that old. That it wasn't <laughs> like, hey, dude, there they are. I've seen these guys on TV. That's the only math I did in my head. You know. Yeah. Ah, uh, the innocence <laughs> of youth. I lost that day. Yes, yes. So another movie coming out that's going to make a certain type of person very happy, and um, these people were very. Uh, I knew a lot of them back in the day. Hocus Pocus 2 trailer is out. Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy something other returns for Disney. Kathy and the Jimmy, how dare you? The Jimmy. Oh, okay, if you say so. Lock, uh, lock up your children, Bette Midler says, an official teaser trailer for Hocus Pocus 2, which drops on Disney <laughs> plus September 30th. Wow. So I got a question real quick. So is dropping to your streaming uh, a thing of choice? Is that uh, is that available at your VHS at Walmart now? Say what? What? So, I think you lost all of us. <laughs> you know, back in the back in the day, you'd, you'd see a you'd see a trailer on television for a movie, and you say, you know, buy it at Walmart, April thirtieth. Oh, 30th. this is are are you are you oh. uh, equating it to the uh, direct to to, yeah. to to TV or direct to video? Because 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 back in the day, the reason it went direct to video because it was it wasn't good enough. And it would be it too expensive lousy. to put it yeah. in theater. So they dropped it the video to hopefully they'd recuperate half the cost. So is that what this is? Is this is is this move this movie so bad we don't want to put it in theater? I, I think that's exactly what it is. And it, or or just hey, we don't have a lot of faith that the Whoa. younger generation, which is in fact my generation, <laughs> is going to come out in droves to see this one. You know? Well, what was it what it, it depends also on how the movie is produced i mean is it is it designed to be a streaming movie is it designed to be a theatrical movie sure. what was it designed for sure 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 and right? there's something that people don't realize there are movies that were designed for big screen and then movies that were designed for home theater exactly and that yes. didn't start until really maybe the the mid to late 80s when people started actually formatting their stuff for hey this is going to come out on home movie you know right there is so, so yeah that's a new thing of you know, remember back in the day, anybody old enough, um, hopefully, or I, I doubt we've got a lot of 19 year olds tuning in. But, um, you know, we all remember the the thing at the beginning of every single VHS tape we ever had was, um, I, damn, I used to remember all the wording of this. Uh, this, this motion picture uh, has, you know, some version of this has been formatted to fit your screen. 
Oh yeah. You know, um, yeah. from its original theatric was, release. Right. Yeah. It has been it has been formatted to fit your screen, which is basically like, hey, we cropped the shit out of this so it would fit on your TV. Yeah. So the, the one know. thing I don't know is I don't remember Hocus Pocus or Hocus Pocus in '93 being on a whole lot of theaters. So it, um, and I, I don't I, either. I, don't I remember think I saw it in the theater. If I remember correctly, back it was on Sacramento. I think it was on either a crappy mall theater or like that that theater that had dollar movies on sun, Saturday type of thing. Um. So I, I that's I know that was something that stuck in my mind. Also, when it came out, it scared the living shit out of me. <laughs> that's a, a vague memory I have is the first movie scaring me for some reason. Even though now it's super campy. Oh, I mean, it was pretty campy back then. Oh no, I know. <laughs> it just scared the hell out of me. That's give, funny because it didn't me, and you're older than me. Well, you know, give me a rated R movie where people's heads were getting chopped off wouldn't bug me. Give me something with like fake witches and it scare the living daylights out of me. <laughs> Honestly, that was hilarious. <laughs> so, drug traffickers arrested in California with 150,000 fentanyl pills released after just days in jail. How do you get 150,000 fentanyl pills? Is my first question. <laughs> I so, don't know. I just wouldn't want to be anywhere near it. Uh -uh. So how deadly fentanyl can be. Yeah, it's no like, shit. It doesn't take hardly anything to kill you. So there's there's a graphic somewhere else, somewhere along the interwebs. If you type, but like in most addictive substances, and what it would take to kill you is it has in these like these little vials that shows you know cocaine, heroin, and then fentanyl. It's like two or three grains in there. Oh it, yeah, exactly. But, you know, the heck with trying to come up with. Uh, you know, you're a spy agency and you, you want to kill somebody easily. You don't have to come up with anything difficult. Just put a little pure fentanyl and they're dead in moments. Yeah, it's um, scary stuff. It really is, man. You know, yeah. it, it really is. And, uh, you know, I think this is it's it almost feels like the difference. I used to hear people talk about how. You know, yeah, in the sick in the in the, the, the late sixties and early seventies, there was the whole free love movement and whatnot. And then the next generation had AIDS. You know, so yeah. it's like you have this generation that was able to get away with everything, and then the next people that came along are like, dude, we can't even no, possibly think about anything you just said. <laughs> so all now it's way, like, oh yeah, we used way. to do all these drugs and we used to go to raves yeah. and all this kind of yeah. stuff, and these new people are just like, Wait, you did what? You took <laughs> drugs from just some rando guy? Yeah. Yeah, all like, in, yeah, you could do that back then. <laughs> all inmates booked into the Tulare County Jail, I know I butchered that, are sent through what is known as the risk assessment process through the county probation department. The risk assessment is then sent to a judge with court order who then determines whether or not the individual's arrest is held on bail or to be released. And they were released, which I would figure somebody who had 150,000 uh, uh, fentanyl pills who can kill millions of people, I figured they, you know, they got to be a risk. Yeah, it, uh, it was worth seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's, so that's, that's so cheap. That's so bloody cheap. Well, see, that's <laughs> the thing about these uh, synthetic opioids, like fentanyl and all that. It's cheap to make. Yeah. Uh, you know the the and, and it's scary as hell. And... Well, and people are starting to use it to like cut other drugs with. You know, hey, all we got to do is put a little fen fen in our in our heroin. Yeah. And then we get the people that are on the heroin addicted to the fen fen or it just makes the heroin that much better so they keep coming back i mean it, is, it's uh is fentanyl addictive oh, oh yeah i didn't actually Absolutely. realize that yeah well and here's the thing you know you're you're a heroin junkie you go to um you john charney you're a heroin junkie um Groovy you go to man? your dealer and you get you know a, a, a 10 spot of heroin <laughs> and there's three heroin dealers on that street the guy whose heroin got you that much more high, you're probably going to go back to. I guess. You know? I'll and take it doesn't take much fen, fen to throw in your heroin. It's not like you have to cut it with, you know, all kinds of stuff. It's just, you know, it increases your <clears throat> demand. Wait, wait, mm. fen, fen? So now it has a cute nickname? Oh, it always has. That's, That's an OG one. <laughs> That's a little odd to me, but hey. Yeah, why not? So here's we don't have nicknames. I want to ask Rob something. Shut up. Uh oh. Bro. Uh oh. So Rob. Yes. What does the DOJ leak mean for us? 
Oh, so oh my goodness, so dude. this is the California Department of Justice's website that uh, apparently had uh, all the list of every concealed weapons permit holder in the state of California. Everybody's put, purchased a firearm in the state of California within the last 10 years, uh, including multiple lists, things like the ammunition purchases uh, uh, and, and all this all in the open. I mean, it was available for just about anybody to download and oh, take. And, and the names, problem with it, addresses, yes, phone names, numbers, addresses, phone numbers, driver's license numbers, yeah, uh, uh, all kinds of stuff. And this is all a, a list of all law enforcement officers and judges and others that should never be out in the celebrities, as well as uh, politicians, people who you know. In California, we have the um, what? What is what is it referred to, uh, uh, Rob? The um, needing a reason to have a concealed yeah. carry so not and, and that was one of the things that it was interesting that this all happened at the same time my first mind goes to conspiracy but so no the shit. supreme court the supreme court came out with a decision uh in in new york about uh needing a cause basically to get an issue of ccw california kind of has that too each of the, sh the sheriffs within the state of california yeah. can make their own rules but uh so in california it's known as a May a issue. A May issue, so that's met, what I was going right. for, yeah. Yeah, it's a May issue. So it, it, if you applied and you had a reason, according to the sheriff the county you lived in, if it was yeah. good enough, then then they might may issue you a CCW. And part of the thing that actually people were pissed off about of the May issue is it does tend to be, getting to my point, of politicians, celebrities, rich people, right. you know, like like the, the high-risk, quote-unquote, sort of people or, you know, that the state of California determines high risk, you know, God forbid, you just want to defend yourself. Um, yeah. It's the, the highest political donor. Yeah. In, in Southern California in particular, but, yes, <laughs> but right. You know, but that, those people's information is on that list the same way as everybody right. else's now. Oh yeah, and, it is. Absolutely. So this is a, this is a horrific thing. Yeah. And uh, so what basically it means for California and our attorney general came out the day the decision for the Supreme court came out, they came, he came out and said, okay, now California is no longer a May issue. It's a shell issue, which means that if you apply, you don't need a reason to want one. Now, if you have a good record, and by the way, folks, if you're out there listening, there's an extensive background check situation that has to go for go forth for CCW people that want it. You know, you have to have a clear background. You have to have, you're going to be, uh, uh, your whole background is going to be looked at by the FBI, by DOJ, by everything else. And yeah, so don't yeah. start freaking out. Oh my God, there's going to be guns running around everywhere, blood in the street. Doesn't happen. Okay. That doesn't change. But what does change is you no longer need cause. James, did that answer your question? Yeah. So that, that's already really been established. Make feel any better. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, so the Supreme Court came out and, yeah, it's already established. And our Attorney General in California already came. Okay, that's fine. No longer no longer do you need cause. Wow. I wonder what the, uh, I wonder what the wait time for L.A. County is going to be. <laughs> so uh, I heard from uh, one of my people. Everybody's got people. One of my people that in San Francisco, within the first mm, 30 minutes of the decision by the attorney general, 50 people applied. Yeah. Within the first 30 minutes. And so that means it's just, it's going to start blowing up on them. So, so. you know, wow. you never needed a reason to do, and that's play audacity. Who is our sponsor? That's your cue. Today's show is brought to you by audacity the gamer dignity is overrated go to o d d a s s i t y dot com that's o d d a s s i t y dot com pick up a card game from this website or selected stores that's audacity the unforgettable party game for mischievous people now do us a favor use mad trio all caps all one word for 10 percent off your final order make sure you tell audacity that the mad trio sent you and well hopefully we're going to have uh, miss audacity herself on sometime soon yeah, great. So anyway, I, I was a long way to get around to James's question to start. <laughs> so, yeah, I probably won't make you feel any better, but uh, I, I understand where you're coming from, and hopefully I answered your question. So have you oh, guys... You're, you're muted, James. Just noticed. <laughs> so have you ever guys ever wanted a question answered so much you were willing to spend a lot of money? A man did just that. A diehard Nintendo fan spent over $40,000 buying Nintendo stock and then asked the top executives 
why the company won't make more of a fan favorite series. This is an insider article, by the way. Uh, a gamer asked execs during a shareholder meeting this week about reviving the game series F Zero, which I have no idea what that is. And I'm <laughs> that's the one. Yeah, right. <laughs> of all of them, he he said he spent uh, he spent five point six million Japanese yen, or over forty thousand dollars, on Nintendo shares for one stock unit. He told the insiders that he's been playing Nintendo games since he was a child and is a diehard fan. Gamer, the game, a gamer said he spent, uh, da, da, fan asked, uh, I, I'm not going to even pronounce the president of Nintendo's name. The company has considered relaunching some fan favorite franchises, specifically F-Zero, which was a racing game series that hasn't had a new entry since 04. Um, wow. I Yeah, that's, um, that's, because that, you know we called first. You know, hey, why aren't you guys making this game anymore? Like, uh, sir, we don't we don't have the answer to that question, sir. That's that's that's, you know, maybe you can try a Reddit forum, you know, and he's like, OK, well, can, let me talk to your boss and, and your boss and whatnot. And they're like, sir, I, I don't have it. I don't have an answer for you. So he's like, OK, I'm just going to buy part of the company and then sit there and be like, now I'm your boss. Answer me. <laughs> so apparently one unit of stocks is 100 shares. So 100 shares for 40 grand. Uh Wow. I, I I wish him luck. I'm not sure. Um, I, I'm not sure if I that's that'd be the question I was asking Nintendo. Of course, I don't know if I would pay that much money for asking Nintendo a question. I don't think I've ever played that game. Uh, I'm looking at it. I've heard of it. I think. Yeah, I know I've heard of it. I don't know if I actually ever played it. I don't know anything. I might be thinking of an arcade version or type game so here's, like that. Here's a benefit, though. In May, Nintendo announced that a 10-for-1 stock split would take effect October 1st, which would split each share into 10 shares. So he may potentially be getting windfall, depending on how Nintendo does in October. I, well, you know what? That's the thing, is that it's hard to say that he spent that much money to get the answer to that question. Um, you know, he took a gamble on an investment to get an answer to that <laughs> question, but that might pay off. He was investing in his entertainment. <clears throat> There's uh, been many times that I wish I had that kind of money just to smack somebody <laughs> right i'm gonna buy this company and become your boss and become your boss and fire yeah. you yeah exactly you're out of here that that only Jeez. happens in the comics unfortunately yeah so yeah. did you hear about the uh, cruise ship that hit the iceberg and i'm not talking like, about like the lately <laughs> yes i'm not talking about the titanic either not like a hundred years ago wasn't that, that 1922? edmund fitzgerald yeah the uh, the norwegian sun which is a, what are they? They're a, um, I, don't I don't remember what cruise line they are, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Apparently it uh, hit an iceberg Saturday near the Hubbard Glacier in Alaska, and it was forced to turn around and head back to Juneau for inspections to see if it was going to sink. Fortunately, it was out not out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, it suffered enough damage that uh, everybody that was on the cruise ship had a, Get off that cruise ship and find other ways to either continue or head home. You'd think they would have How learned dare from the they Titanic. call themselves descendants of Vikings. Yeah, huh. So, <laughs> so yeah, anyway, it, uh, the damage was severe enough uh, that uh, uh, they weren't in, uh, it wasn't going to be a, a sinkable type of moment for the ship, but uh, they had to head back to Seattle for repairs, but they could only go half speed. And it, so it was enough damage. So imagine the embarrassment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're the well, I, I think, you know, Carnival gets a gets a um, the brunt of it. But I think all of the stuff from Carnival the last bunch of years has really just trickled to the cruise industry in general. So, you know, I yeah. think all of these cruise lines are trying to dig themselves out of a, a reputation. Well, well COVID you know, didn't that help. That's for COVID, sure. No yeah, shit. Co yeah. COVID just destroyed cruising. I mean, I the whole idea. For a dollar. Yeah. You know, the whole idea of being stuck on a ship like that. Is, Probably uh, can buy a cruise for a dollar now. Just about. I'll tell you what, you know, and I be honest with you, I, I kind of enjoy cruising. I mean, I, I did do a cruise to Alaska. I did a cruise in the, in the Bahamas. But, um, you know, the whole idea of being stuck on a ship during uh, a pandemic like it was, was just frightening on those early ages, you know, when when. COVID first hit and the ships were out there and nobody could disembark and all of that stuff was like frightening, absolutely frightening. So 
Not Sorry, interested. I got, I got distracted by watching James walk. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, so. I had to go in a different room. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, you know, my brother's been in a cruise ship a few times. I've never had a desire to do it. Yeah. They were a great, lazy way of, of going to see things. I mean, it was a great way to see Alaska. To be and honest getting with. fat. Because we did, all you well, do on a cruise ship is you, fucking eat. Nobody's forcing you to eat all that food just because it's there. Doesn't Bullshit. Mean you need to eat it all. But, but, I disagree. Um, <laughs> it's there, so <laughs> therefore I must eat it. You're going, I paid for all this food. I'm going to eat every bit of it. Well, it, I on a cruise when I was, um, I want to say, 16 and it was, you know, you tell a kid like, hey, you're going to go on a cruise. It was a Mexican Caribbean uh, cruise. And it's like, like, OK, we're going to go on a cruise. Like, that's that's cool. That's, you know, beats a road trip, I guess, <laughs> but didn't have kind of an opinion one way or another. And then for 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 kids, even teenagers, it's your parents get on the boat and they just let you go. They're like, yeah. well, you can't exa- even if you get lost, you you're go? on a boat. Yeah. You know, so just don't fall overboard. You're basically right, was like the only rule, right? You know, right. don't fall overboard. So um, your and, parents and never we'll let you, you out of their dinner. sight then, right? And, you know, then you I did this thing where I'm walking down the the corridor at like three o'clock in the morning with like a dozen people that I met. And there's my dad walking by me with like a beer in his hand. And we're just like, huh? Hey, well, uh, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually a really, really good time. You know, yeah, I, it can be a, a, a good family thing. They, the only thing at this stage of my life is that I don't really want to be on a, a boat with a bunch of screaming kids you know it's at this stage i wanted to be an adult on my ship you no know, i totally <laughs> but, know what you mean the idea of an alaskan cruise though has always appealed to me because i think that's how i want to see alaska i, I gotta tell you so we, we did the boat tour and we did a land tour as well but the boat one of the neatest things is we got to go into some, some of the bays and uh the, where the glaciers are calving and we just yeah. got to watch it and it was just spectacular it was you've really seen actual calving in real oh, yes. life oh yes seen Dude. it heard it you know, it was, it's unbelievable. That's, uh, I mean, yeah. you, you, that's one of those things that, that I, I know the videos and things, even though I can, I, I can, okay, I can tell scale and, you know, things like that, but right. that just, the video will never, ever be able to do that kind of thing justice. No, it doesn't. And it's, it's unbelievable um, to, to be able to watch it. And, and that's why I tell people, you're going to do a, a Alaska cruise, do it in one of the smaller ships because then you sure. can go in the fjords. Yeah, you get yeah, to yeah. See this, and it's just uh, it's just amazing to watch, and you get a scale, you get to see the scale, the size of these glaciers to get a yeah. better idea, you know, because when you're there and you're looking and you see this little tiny boat out there, yeah, and yeah. these things are coming, you go, oh my god, no wonder they have people die from this stuff. Yeah, and there's you know? one thing to see that little boat, you know, on my computer screen or even yeah. on my phone. And, and you're like, oh, I get, I can understand the size of this, of this wall of ice right here. Right. right? right. And, but you're not feeling it. You know what I right. mean? Like you, you, you see the people's reaction on the boat and you're like, wow, that must've been crazy. <laughs> I've always yeah. wanted to go on one of those gimmick cruises. Like Chris Jericho, the wrestler has his rock and raging wrestler at sea. Or if high times ever did a cruise, I'd love to go on that just high, to high people times. watch. I think that'd be hilarious <laughs> just because I want to see how many of the, the, the crews are like, oh, that's not going north. I, bro, I think you would be begging to get off that ship in an afternoon. Oh, I guarantee. <laughs> but it would be hilarious to watch. That's too funny. As, as long as you're on the outside, you know, I bet I'd, I'd, I'd love to also I'd love to see the rules. Like all these cruise ships have rules for these gimmick things. So I'm assuming high times would have uh, no smoking indoors. <laughs> so everybody would be hanging outside of portholes and decks. Well, that's why you want to get the uh, balcony. That whole <laughs> rooms, inside right? of that ship would look like the inside of a resonated bong. <laughs> <It'd> just be <laughs> all yellow and caked up. <laughs> But I, I've, I've always wanted to do one of those gimmick cruises. Like when I was a kid, we did a, a, a Disney one, and uh, which was which was amusing when they tried to get a, a, a somewhat non-sociable kid to be social with all the rest of the people. It's like, well, fuck you! I'm just going to play shuffleboard. And that's pretty much what I did <laughs> the whole damn time. <laughs> like, I'd rather be by myself. Thank you, John Charney, the nine-year-old, eighty-year-old. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. 
I was always kind of a cranky bastard. Uh, um, and, and talk about something that I'm actually kind of excited about or horrified. The next Ghostbusters movie is coming in 2023, allegedly around December 20th. There's next, no official like plot. The, like or, a sequel to the new, the latest? <clears throat> one? Yeah. So there's, <laughs> the, there's no official plot uh, or casting news. It's generally expected the film will build off the post credit scene for Ghostbusters Afterlife, where Winston Zedmore reveals he's now a huge, wealthy businessman, and he decides to relaunch the Ghostbusters. And have all you... have. Have Ryan, have you seen Afterlife? Yeah, I did. So, uh, yay or nay? I wanted to ask you. Know, you know, um, I have to try <sighs> to look through the, you know, so, movies like that can definitely just keep hitting my nostalgia button, you know, and <laughs> yeah. it's just I'm getting that dopamine fix like that guy keeps hitting the morphine button in the hospital, you know. Um, so, yeah, you oh, can keep yeah. hitting my nostalgia button. I, I think that they wrote a love letter to the original movies, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, I like that they kind of took it to the the place of the the next generation of those exact people and, you know, things like that. Um and and, and I thought they did a, a decent job. I mean, you know, obviously it's 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 a little more I know saying it's more fantastical is uh kind of a stretch based on what the original ones were, but you know they take they take some uh, some some extra liberties with you know physics and you know things like that and uh, you know the type of engineering a, a you know a, a teenager can do you know sort of thing but um, but I, I still enjoyed it I think I had a good time watching it you know I'm not going to discount that you know I I I I've all seen it once and I, I want I I'm I got I'm going to try to set time aside to watch it again um, but now the, the first scene it had me hooked from the very beginning. Um, I'm a little concerned. I, I just because, like Ryan said, there's nostalgia, and they already foreshadowed um, the, the issues. If you've seen the the, the last the end of the movie, um, I don't know. I, lo- I, I I'm excited. I did hope. I know we said this before. I kind of hoped they did it with when they had the all chicks one. I was hoping that would be a continuation instead of the shitty movie it turned out to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, that was more of like a a. Um, it was Keystone's a spiritual cops. sequel than a direct sequel, you know, kind of a thing. It it was Keystone's Cops meets Ghostbusters. Yeah, mm. and not funny like Keystone's Cops is. Um, this should make Ryan and James sad. California's Great America is closing within yes, eleven years. Uh. Well, that's up here in the Santa Clara era. Okay, yeah, yeah. theme yeah. park. Yeah, yeah. Cedar gotcha. Fair has announced that it has sold the land on which California's Great Adventure sits. It will lease it, it lease it back for at least eleven years before the park closes for good. The three hundred and ten million deal with the real estate developer Progus is part of an eventual wind down of the park, according to Cedar Fair Press. Um. So yeah. So pretty much. Uh, it's I'm bummed because it's another theme park. You know, it's another, you know, one of these things. Um, you know, those things you you grow up with. The whole idea is, hey, my parents took me to this thing when I was a kid. I want to take yeah. my kids to this thing and try to have that that same experience, you know. Uh, well, you better hurry up and get some kids, Ryan. Nah, yeah. shit, I know, right? It's like Knott's Berry Farm going away. It's kind yeah. of good, 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 well, right. Yeah. Um, the Ren Fair, the Renaissance Fair came back yeah. into town, you know, after the, the COVID hiatus and whatnot. And it was just a year before that that me and a buddy found out that it that it still happens. You know, we were talking about some fantasy thing and we're like, dude, I used to go to the Ren Fair when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And he's like, dude, I've never been to a Ren Fair. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if they still do it. And it used to be about an hour and a half away from me. I look it up. It's 10 minutes down the street and it was happening the next Month. like dude wow. we gotta go we gotta go because i hadn't been there as an adult you know i was the kid with the wooden sword you know <laughs> running around you know laughing at the uh the wenches and things um <laughs> as an adult you realize immediately like oh this is about day drinking <laughs> i see what's happening here yes. <laughs> and you know um that's where i got my my fancy uh, uh, pipe um yeah and oh, smoking there you and, go. And smoking. You mean you're and, and you know, so me and my lady, we got, you know, some some Renfair costumes and whatnot. 
Um, and we go there and we're having a good time. And it was all I was thinking is like, like, oh, dude, this is why these things are still here is so people can take their kids and show them like, hey, this is how we used to have fun back in the day. You know, isn't this yeah. still fun? You know, I, I did see something yeah. that I've always wanted to do. If I ever go to a Ren fair, I want to be the geek that shows up in a Star Trek uniform. <laughs> There's always <laughs> one. Yeah, bastard. Hey, <laughs> what's funny, though, actually, um, the because uh, <laughs> we've gone a couple of years. Um, There's always a TARDIS. Oh, <laughs> oh sure. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't Back know when the TARDIS who? started, but the last few years we've gone, there's been a TARDIS just that's sitting there funny. like, is that a TARDIS? Yep, that's a TARDIS. Great, great. Good, <laughs> good on them. That's fine. Yeah. I love that. And they do theme weekends. Yeah. You know, they'll have like a pirate weekend. The um, the last weekend they do is always like a, um, it's called RenCon. And that's like the straight up, you know, just show up kind of however you want. But um, yeah, no, I love the people that take it super seriously. Uh and you know, good food. You're overpriced beer. I bought a uh, a drinking horn, which I thought I had around here, but I don't. Um, and um, that's when I discovered mead is goddamn amazing. Yep. <laughs> and um, then you, then that whoever made the mead did a good job. Then is what you're saying. Yes, this was actually a semi mass produced mead. Oh, okay. So yeah, it came out of a can, but you can tell. Yeah, it was. Um, okay. I can't remember what flavors. I know there was pineapple and something or other, and um, I can't recall, but they were really tasty. I didn't know yeah. that you can make mead sparkling. I don't know why it didn't occur to me, but you can. Yeah. Um, yeah. They actually have a, a honey vendor mm. that sells full-on starter kits for, hey, you want to make some mead? There Here's, you, go. you know, 47 pounds of honey and, you know, a couple of jars. And <laughs> go you, for it. Yeah. How you know, you amazing? can make mead. How you can and listen. they've got all these different types of flavored honeys and things like that. And oh, I, that's, that's cool. a part of it. What I love is the artisans. They right. come out, the leather workers, the, right. the, 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 uh, the blacksmiths and, you know, things like that. Everything's yeah. crazy overpriced, but. Of course, I, but it's I, fun. That's all part of the experience. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap it up. It's past the old guy's bedtime. So do us a favor. <laughs> Check Over out the if, hour. if if the old guy can hit the right button to, to tell us how people can actually pay attention to us. Uh, okay, here we go. Today's show is brought to you by Audacity. The game where dignity is overrated. Go to o d d a s s i t y dot com. That's o d d a s s i t y. Shout out to Melanie. Pick up a card game. This one's for from you. this website or selected stores. That's Audacity. Do you want to keep up to date on the maddest of the people. mad at the Mad Trio podcast? <laughs> Check out our social media feeds on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or go to themadtrio.com. I've just hit the buttons. It doesn't matter what order. Now. If if all you <laughs> didn't know how to uh, to find Audacity, go to audacity.com. Use Mad Trio all caps, all one word for 10% off your final order. Make sure you go to themadtrio.com to pay attention to what we're doing. And as always, thank you for listening. Goodbye. Bye.